Green Lantern First Flight is arguably the most hated roller coaster Six Flags has ever built. It opened at Magic Mountain in 2011 and is now on its way to La Ronde, where it was supposed to open for the 2020 season there as Viper, but it has been postponed to 2021. And it looks like they might be making some design changes, including fabricating new track to improve that ride experience. But interestingly enough, Green Lantern First Flight is not the only one of its kind ever built. It's the only one in America that ever opened. But there's actually a couple around the world. Probably the most well-known is an exact clone located at Gronoland in Sweden called Insane. I had the opportunity to ride this two years after I experienced Green Lantern and I walked in here wondering is this going to be better than Green Lantern? In today's video, I'll be answering that question. Now the first thing I want to discuss is what makes this ride different because it is the same layout. From what I understand, Insane is how the ride is supposed to operate. Six Flags made some design changes modifying the shape of the ride vehicles, ended up weighing them down, and now it doesn't spin as much as it used to. Because it didn't spin, it made the ride rougher, caused some uncomfortable sensations, and in general, everyone hated it. This one did not have that case. See how the side panels kind of look like a cartoon drawing of the sun or like a ninja throwing star? Part of the weight that Six Flags added to the vehicles was to fill in those gaps. But the whole idea is that Insane is supposed to spin the amount that Intamin designed it to. However, that is dependent on a couple of circumstances. One of them is weight. If you have an off-balance vehicle and hit a transition at just the right moment, you're gonna flip more than a balanced vehicle hitting a transition at not the right moment. I kind of compare it to a Hus top spin and they actually flip in a pretty similar manner. Intima designed this ride to orient the flipping behind your back. That's where the spoke is, and it's also where the spoke is on the top spin because you have riders back to back, the same you do on an Intamin Zack spin. Unfortunately, I don't think this is the most comfortable way to flip, and we have seen that other companies have realized this and come up with a better design. You look at the SNS40 free spins, the spoke that you're rotating around is located near your stomach, so it's more comfortable. It's like you're doing a somersault. You also flip a lot more, which by nature makes Makes the ride experience more enjoyable. How many times do you flip on a Zack spin? At most, maybe like three. As for me personally, I got like one flip, maybe one and a half. Most of the ride experience I had was rocking back and forth, starting to go into a flip, then coming out of it, or just sitting on straight track. I'll be honest, I thought this ride was bland, boring, and just plain dumb. It's certainly cool looking, it's visually impressive when you're walking up to it, but oh my gosh, it did not do anything. The best part is you do this flip right at the very end as you go into the brake run, and by then the ride is over. The entire top section of the ride coming off of the lift is completely uneventful. It is kind of cool dropping underneath yourself, but it's not a very pleasant sensation. I certainly think that what Six Flags did with Green Lantern made that experience worse than this, but I still don't think that this is a very good ride at all. I am not a fan of Intamin Zaxpins. Was Insane rough? No, I wouldn't say it was. I just didn't think it was fun. You know, you ride a roller coaster to enjoy it, but this did not provide really any pleasant sensation. Sensations. If you want to do that kind of flipping, then yeah, ride a topspin. Honestly, that does what Insane tried to do a lot better. When you compare this to the SNS40 free spins, I mean, that is a complete difference. Even though they're in a similar situation where the flipping can depend on the weight of your vehicle, you're still almost guaranteed to have a better ride experience than you would on this. Not to mention, Zaxman's have a mid-course brake run. I mean, this is not a long ride. It has a mid-course, so not even the pacing is good. In my opinion, there's just not really anything redeemable about this, but again, this is just my opinion. I know some people that actually really enjoy these things. Some of the guys that I rode this with came off with a completely different viewpoint, and that's fine. I respect that, but personally, I thought this ride was pretty dumb. For its final score, I'm going to give it a 2 out of 10. I didn't enjoy it, but I didn't despise it. Like, I didn't hate it so much that I would never ride it ever again. If I go back to Groenland, maybe I'll ride it again. But it's not going to be at the top of my priority list. The only coasters I give ones to are the ones that I refuse to get back on and hate with a burning passion. I don't hate insane but I don't like it. In my opinion, this was a failed concept. It's a neat idea, but SNS just perfected it in every way. If you're wanting a ride in a vertical format that provides a maximum amount of thrills with some cool flipping sensations, then yeah, go ride a 40 free spin. But hey, that's just the opinion of one guy. I wanna hear from you guys what you think of this, if you disagree with my opinion, if you think that I'm right, or if you haven't gotten the chance to do this, then let me know what you thought of Green Lantern at Magic Mountain. Or if you haven't done that, maybe let me know what you think of one of their smaller Zach 
back spins. I have yet to do one of those, so I'm curious how it translates over. But until next time, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.